Let's drink some green tea. So, man, uh, welcome to the second video featuring our robot overlords. Also featuring my games from the 2018 US Go Congress. I guess I don't need this running on the first movie game here. Let's pause you. This, uh, well, here, let's do some business. First of all, you notice I'm wearing the official t shirt from the US Go Congress. Uh, it is yellow. I do think yellow is a good color on me, although I think with the green screen and the other lighting uh, in, in this little studio, it, looks a little, it might look a little weird. Um, actually, I'm thankful it's not green, because then I would just be invisible right now, so that's cool as well. I had a great Congress. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, uh, do go watch it, even though I think I'll, we didn't cover a lot of like really good heuristics or concepts for especially Q players to learn. Uh, it is a pretty in-depth analysis of my first round one game of the US Open this year. And it does, we do talk a lot about the subtleties of uh, spacing and, and where to play stones and direction of play in terms of fighting. So do go back and watch that if you want to get the context. But if you want to jump in and just see game two, hey, you're in the right place. Let's, let's stick around. So day two, uh, this time I am white and taking, uh, I'm, I'm taking on an opponent who I've played in actually several times in years past. He, he's an older Japanese guy who's just super friendly. Um, his English skills are pretty limited, but again, he's... He seems like such a nice guy, and he comes to every U.S. Go Congress. Uh, in Japan, they don't really have anything quite like the U.S. Go Congress. In recent years, they've had the J Japanese Go Congress, which is basically just a weekend of Go. Um, but you'll find that, uh, you know, get the idea of getting several hundred just amateur Go players together for classes and workshops and a big tournament, um, that doesn't really exist because, you know, they, they're Go parlors for that, right? You just go play Go at the Go Club, you know, in your city. And go play socially, like because Go is more entwined in their society, and and I know I know it's still dying off in Japan because it's still seen sort of as an old man's you know uh, activity there. Um, you know, there's still places to go play and do it, and that sort of that sort of means you don't need a Go Congress, right? Like we do in the West. So that's cool. That's fine. I'm um, sorry. Anyway, like I said, I'm taking white, and here let's play the first few moves on the board. Uh, so so I'm playing this opposing Kamuku opening. And uh, this is all part of my plan to play four space extensions. I'm still hyped up on this great idea. And uh, I'll just, just, just as a fair warning, uh, you know, I got I got to put some advisory stickers on this because this game is bad. The last game we had some major swings and some some ridiculous just changes of fortune. Uh, and the you know little meter over here, the graph was going whap 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 back and forth. This game, this this game is mostly suffering, and so I really want to point out to you uh, the biggest mistake that I make this game. Spoiler spoiler alert, and uh, it's, this is gonna be very painful for me. Like you're gonna this is this, I'm I'm gonna try to keep a very positive mood for your benefit, but I don't know if I can. So we'll try. Okay. Uh, Black plays Orthodox, again, traditional, older, you know, again, he's an older Japanese guy. Wouldn't really necessarily expect him to play any of the AlphaGo openings. Um, totally fine. And I play, aha, the four space extensions, my secret weapon for the USGO Congress. Huzzah! Well, uh, he, I mean, he just doesn't, he's, like, he's looking at the board, doesn't know what to do with this, so he just continues to build his own side of the board. And I think that's fine. Um, if we turn on the robot at this point, the robot will say, yeah, I should enclose the corner. Oh, I do not want it to show variations. Um, play over here and just black will build, I'll build, and that's a game. Of course, if I play here, I don't like this because black will play here. And this double wing formation for black is very nice. Um, the stone is very flexible. And I feel, I feel like the onus is too much placed on white. Now, the robot doesn't agree at all. The robot's like, hey, you're even better than when you started... Um, from all these exchanges, just start invading. Very difficult for me to play that way, though. Very, very non-human way of playing Go. Uh, so, oops, 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 there we go. Um, so instead, I play here. And this is, you know, very natural. Just, look, I, I don't want to have all my stones trapped to one side of the board. Let's start expanding across. Um, he takes the move down here. Let's see some win percentages. Um, and it looks still good for white. Now, you can see that uh, Robot just really wants me to attach and play out this Joseki. 
which very common Joseki. But I'm really, I, and I don't, I'm not re, I'm, I'm not happy with this. Like I, I should be happy with this, but in my reading, because this is what I read out, I should be happy um, because I just feel like Black got a good result, right? Black got a nice little comfortable base. Um, but I really shouldn't be so happy. This isn't so comfortable for Black. Like Black really needs another move before Black truly feels comfortable. Um, and I'm also looking at the left hand side of the board, and it's still, even though I got two really nice corners. Uh, you know, it still feels like giving black sente gives black a chance to build on the left. So, I didn't like it. But again, the robot's like totally fine, just play it. Um, so instead I decided to press my advantage in the top left. Uh, he plays an older, simpler Joseki. Again, he's, he's playing all old man moves, you know. <laughs> like old man Japanese moves. Very solid, very patient. Uh, lots of, lots of, you know, completed shapes. Um, but that being said, he's still he's still a strong player. Like he was he he he'd actually been demoted previously in other tournaments. He was Ford on and then has been demoted. Um, this year the brackets were very strange. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Usually for the first two days you can only play people at the same rank as you. Um, so I should only be playing other Ford ons. Uh, in this tournament, this was not the case, and I don't know why. But someone in the TD uh, area sees this video and wants to comment. Please do below. All right, so I just jump in. Let me play out this Joseki, and uh, instead of playing this move here, I play this move, and I kind of think if we let it go on long enough, I think it'll start. To, you'll start to see this move creep up as a prime candidate, but maybe I'm wrong. Come on, little guy. Are you coming up? Are you a better move than you think? Come on. Oh, man. No, nope, not coming. Okay. Well... It eh, says it's still now that it's directly thinking about it. It's, it's still not pref not as preferred as to just play that. Um, but black just responds there, and that's uh, that's fine. Um, this white group is now safe. This white stone has lots of Aji. Um, coming back down here will be fine timing. Um, but again, I, I still just don't like the way this result looks at the end of the the Joseki we play out. So uh, I sort of insist on continuing this way. Um, black just extends, and again, I still have time to come back and do this, um, but I don't want to, so I'm back at the top. <laughs> and so through all these exchanges, you can kind of see that, uh, you know, basically the white's advantage has disappeared a little bit, just because I've kind of insisted on playing from this third line group too many times uh, instead of developing another part of the board. So this, this, is, this is a small mistake for white, and the game has swung slightly in terms of the opening. Um, mainly just because I didn't know what else to do. I was very unhappy playing, continuing down here. I didn't really want to just jump in and invade. And so I just played these semi-obvious kind of moves. Now here, black plays here, and the and robot still says I should play here. Um, but I think if we just give it long enough, you'll see that this move starts to outrank it. It's already a higher win percentage. It just doesn't have the same confidence level. Um, because I've invested all these moves, pushing up here... Um, starts to at least make use of some of the Aji. Uh, are you going to get more confident in this one? There it is. There we go. Now it's flipped. Oh, slip back. Flip again. Do it. I said do it. Go, robot. You stupid robot. Come on, this is the better move. Ah, uh, robot's like, no, playing this corner is better. Yeah, I'm going to drink tea. We're going to drink tea together and we'll wait. I'm I'm fully convinced it will flip back. <laughs> it just needs to play out another five thousand variations to catch up to this one. This one keeps pulling away. What the hell, guy? Look, he played twelve thousand variations in this one. It's still a higher percentage. Huh. Well, this is kind of funny. This is kind of funny. Partially because this is one of the moves I checked in in a Lizzie. Uh, before before this review, and I saw the same thing happen, except it didn't get go up quite so high before it flipped back. Because um, when I first ran it, I saw like Lizzie kept wanting me to play down here, and I was like, no, this move has to be bigger, right? This has to be the better move. All right, 22 to 23 to 25k, 24 to 25k. We need to drink a little bit more tea. I just want to feel vindicated. This is, I play the top move in the game. And I thought about it for a while. I was like, you know, this is this. This is where it's at. 
Oh, come on. No, no. Look, it's... You're doing nothing. What are you doing? Uh, all right, so it's not, not giving me any satisfaction here. It's really not. Uh, at, le at, le at least it's good to know that Lizzie doesn't compute the exact same way every time. There is a little bit of randomness built in, um, such that it can it can give you different excuse me different results every time you run it. So anyway, I play there, and that's a good move. You just have to trust me. It says actually we're at zero point zero percent. It's like it doesn't know if this is or this is better. So that's fine. Um, black of course plays here. And I play here. It says here black should double honey, which is really interesting. But it's... Oh, I didn't see this move. That's kind of a neat move. That's a very neat move. Oh man, what a what a tough fight we've gotten in already. All right, that's cool. Not, not what happened. Not what happened. Um, instead, black plays here. Again, very solid passive not interested in asking for too much um and i think i think the robot here for the next like 30 moves is going to just say hey first one to push up here wins <laughs> um and i i you know I have, I have a hard time making this exchange um because black still has this cut here um so so it's like i i'm not i guess this is fine for me right now like white black can't really do anything um, my, my cutting stones are too strong and his are too weak, so maybe I think I was just overly worried about this for some reason. I just didn't want to invest another stone, um, even though that stone is useful in the fight, so... I think it's also just the feeling of, like, is this really how the game's gonna go? Like, is this really good for white? Isn't white too open down here? Ugh, uh, risky. Very risky. Giant Moyo risky kind of game. Um, but I think that's what I need to play, because I don't, and... Well, let me spin my microphone a little bit. Maybe that might sound a little better. I don't play it, and I think I get punished. Or at least I do something dumb. <laughs> Maybe that's probably the better way to put it. It's not that I not that I get punished. It's that I do something dumb. <laughs> um, which you can see, you know, so far this 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 game is pretty even. Um, but after this move, this is a big swing to black. Um, I'm just looking at the shape and going, look, this is the shape point. Let's just poke it. And I think these kinds of pokes are really good in one of two circumstances. Number one circumstance, you're going to poke the shape and then to immediately tanuki, right? You're, you're just going to say, hey, look, I'm going to make your shape cumbersome a little bit later. So you do it and you tanuki. The second time is when you poke the shape and then you read out what your opponent's response will be and you're going to read out what you're going to benefit from that and how you're going to continue the harassment. And I don't really do either one of these. I sort of just poke this on instinct. And then after he makes this exchange and he plays here, um, I just kind of pretend that I can keep playing. <laughs> and so we play this, and we play this, and I'm just kind of looking for free stuff. Now this is an interesting case. In the game, Black Hane's here. Um, this is actually a bad, this should be a bad result for him, right? Well, I, get, I get a whole bunch more free stuff now. Um, what Black should do is actually cut here, and I think right now, yeah, I think this Atari's better. Um, black should just, whoops, maybe not that one, maybe, uh, uh, maybe this way first. Um, white needs to get these stones out, or not die over here. Basically, black will either, um, bla black will likely kill all of these stones, uh, maybe not all of them, enough of them? <laughs> mm, tough to say. Very difficult, difficult. There's there's a lot of variations in here. Um, yeah, it's it's this is this is some grotesque fighting. <laughs> uh, but the computer seems to think it's good for black. Uh, it seems like black will have an easier time living than white. Um, and then once black does that, black will only have to handle this one outside group, and white will basically have two weak groups. So I think I think that's sort of the way to to draw your conclusion. Um, Simply. Yeah, I really likes this move. Yep, and then yeah, push up. And again, just you have two weak groups to push on. It's a it's a delicate fight, but one black can handle. Alright. Anyway, my opponent doesn't do that, my opponent plays here. And so 
I play here. This is just pure forcing move, and it's good Aji. And uh, the game, you know, the robot says, look, whoops, no. this is all good enough. All these exchanges are really difficult for black to deal with later. So let's go back to just taking that big side, and black will have to come over here and fix, and then we can just take two big points while black is trying to uh, guarantee safety for this giant group. And there's still plenty of Aji. Whoops, right? If, uh, if we want to... Let's give Black a move. Um, you know, we can still come back and do things like this and, uh, you know, have some potential to make a live group down here. Okay, but Black plays here. I Atari, I just connect this way. Again, I'm still sort of eyeing this cut, um, which Black fixes immediately, but this is a very poor, poor way to fix it. Um, Black doesn't need all these stones connected. These two stones are kind of out. As long as Black can, can deal with what's down here, um, these two stones still have a, this cut and defect to work with, so not not super important. So here, uh, game is still like, hey, you should play over here. Um, any other moves? Or here, that's probably second best. Um, but I play here, and I'm thinking, look, I still have these, this Aji, I still need to find a way to use it. Uh, my opponent, again, old Japanese guy. This is probably the strongest response because it preserves this cut, which is very severe. Um, it's a little bit dangerous um, because of these two stones, but it's, it's fine. And he doesn't play it, though. He just plays here. Again, looking for a very Hante proper solid move. And I'm going, well, okay, well, he responded there, and I still have this type of sequence to get more liberties here. Um, so let's play another move on the outside. And if we, if we can harass these three stones and harass this group, again, these groups don't have a ton of liberties. Like, they have enough liberties to not die. Like, they're not going to die. They're not going to get in trouble. Um, but I just want to harass them. Maybe I can get enough free stuff on the outside in which I can turn this game uh, decidedly in my favor. And if you watch my first video, uh, this is the exact kind of thing I already tried in the upper left-hand corner in the previous game. Uh, where I had, you know, I, I play the 3-3 three, three and sacrifice the corner group to try to short the liberties on the two outside groups. This is the exact same thing with these two stones. And so I'm in, like, the exact same position again, like, all over again. Completely different, completely different, um, you know, shapes, but the concept is we're in the same place. This, is, this group was more moved toward the second and third line, uh, and, yeah, <laughs> this group was also moved towards the corner. Uh, this is funny how history is repeating itself. Black plays another really passive move. Is this really not looking for trouble? Is this like, hey, can I just have, let me just take my points, let me be solid. You can go do whatever you want. And you know what? I should let him. I should say, great, I'm going to come over here and take the next biggest point. But I don't. Instead, I get creative. Uh, and I, just like in the first game, I uh, increase the number of liberties on the cutting group. Right? The dead group that's kind of dead. I... Give it even more liberties to make it harder to capture. In this case, Black responds here, which is um, arguably a better exchange than what I made in the first game, but we'll, we can debate the merits of it later. Um, the robot's like, okay, you've already killed off this group. You've already given it more liberties. You've, you've increased the number of value that it is to kill it off. Um, just take some endgame immediately in Sente, which I can do, uh, and this would be just fine. Like, white, you know, white makes almost 18 points here. At the top, the center group isn't in trouble yet. Um, I still have Sente. I have some potential in the top right. This is a game. And even a game where it says, the robot says, white is winning. That kind of game. I don't play that yet. Instead, I get more creative. <laughs> Creativity will win you go games. And you can see that the robot hated my move. Uh, here, let's uh, turn off the, the pondering. This is a common probe. And... Uh, you know, I feel like whenever I play it, it's always at the wrong time. It's just, it's just a, a probe that's so easy. So easy to misplay, mistime, misread. And here again, I do it. Um, and my opponent even gives me a response that the computer does not respect. Uh, the computer wants to just stay solid. But he plays this one, and I don't continue because I thought this Joseki's bet, like this is actually the Joseki pattern, except White's normal next move is here, which this would be awful. Mm. I guess it's not awful, it's just neutral. Um, mm. 
eh, maybe it's not that bad. This is also kind of a forcing move. I still have this Aji to capture a stone. But, yeah, black would just take Sente. Can't really do anything. Um, computers would say play here, fix, fix. Uh, ooh, even take Sente here. That's interesting. Taking Sente here is a little bit dangerous, though. Yeah. Oh, he's saying none of these work. None of these work. Hmm. Yeah, black always has this move. So if these five stones ever get into trouble, it's very difficult for white to um, to actually get them into trouble. So this exchange, like like this exchange, is totally not necessary. I think I think part of my problem in the game, not not the reason why I lost. I'll show. You, I'll, the reason why I lost is coming. Don't worry. Um, but part of my problem with the game is that I thought these cutting stones were more of a nuisance for black than they actually were. Rest assured, they do actually end up living at the end of the game, but um, that's that's not important right now to know. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to actual game, because after this move, I don't know how to continue and get anything good. Uh, so now I play this move. And we're kind of back at a 50-50 game. And, um, you know, I got to play the what the robot has now deemed for the last 20 moves the most important point on the board. And my opponent even plays really aggressive. And so this should be great for white. And this is a Joseki that I know when this stone is here. And the fact that this stone is one line further off uh, really screws with me. Like, like makes it significantly more difficult. Um, and it shouldn't be that much more difficult. And I'll show, I'll show you the, the key move that I that I need to transpose over to get a good result. It is right here, as this is the move. So in this Joseki, when this black stone is here, um, why can just play here and just connect? And this is what I do in the game, because I'm like, oh, this Joseki looks like it works almost the exact same way. But it doesn't. It, it really doesn't. Um, basically, the normal Joseki hap some, happens something like this. Black extends. And when this stone is closer, um, white just jumps to here. But when the stone's further away, this isn't as attractive anymore, <laughs> right? White will black will just hane, and now white's really crushed on the inside. And so you can kind of see how that works. If, on the other hand, I had played the correct move, black can take one free Atari down here, and that's fine. But black more or less still has to push twice from behind, uh, maybe three times <laughs> in this case. And if black were to choose to now run this stone out, Instead of attaching to the stone, I can play all the way to here. And this is a very big difference, right? Because now I actually have um, potential to make a base. And you're like, no, black will just cut. Like, not really, though. There's no there's no cut here. Okay? And so this is this is the key move, not seeing, not being able to find this tiger's mouth. And again, this is a this is a tiger's mouth that the robots really like to play. They really, especially in a lot of the 3-3 Josekis. This sets me down a very dark path. You know, we're, we're going to go to some dark places here. Don't worry. Like, I apologize in advance or, you know, just, you know, parental advisory warning. Okay. So I don't play this move and I play this one. So I'm making my life very difficult on myself. And I play here, 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 and here. And instead of continuing, black now moves out the stone. And so I get to play this move. Like, this move's free. Um, but for some reason, like, like just, I don't know why I thought this. I just imagined black would play here. And um, this this gives me a very nice result um, because this group is not alive yet. So I, I, all, I, all I need are liberties. I can just get enough liberties and I can come back and kill this. Or if I get enough liberties, black has to make another move here and then I get a second move on the outside, right? This should be really good for white. And you can already see that reflected in the win percentage. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I didn't look for this tiger's mouth shape nearly enough, because I just I just read this out and was like, look, we're, he can't do anything super bad to me. Um, I have time. This is this is a this is a pretty significantly good position for white. Um, I can I don't need to find a better move. This move is just good, you know, to to keep the pressure on the corner. It, but it's really only good if again if this stone is one line closer. So when I play here, and he plays here. I kind of scratch my head and I'm like, huh, I guess that's the better move. And it's actually a way better move, right? This is the difference between winning and losing the game. <laughs> it's a pretty significant uh, difference. And so I go back to head scratching. And I'm like, okay, new plan. I need to um, cut 
this stone is too far away from these two. I need to find a way to cut through here and capture these two. And the way to do that was to keep extending the stick out until it gets to the long enough where I can um, push and cut. And the way I reasoned that I would get the stick to keep extending is to just get a little bit of extra shape or liberties over here, right? So I make this attachment, and he plays there. And then uh, try to poke out the eye shape in Sente. And if, you're, if you are already looking to the left-hand side of the board and looking at the graph, you will see that this is a hugely flawed plan. Black's going to push, I'm going to push, Black's going to push again, and all of a sudden, I'm in super deep trouble. Because I played this one move. And actually, right after I played this move, and was sort of realizing what was about to happen, um, I got up from the board, like I walked around, like I didn't, I didn't want to look at my game for a few minutes. I uh, went to the bathroom. Again, there's 90 minutes on the clock for each of us, so I have plenty of time to just, you know, try to recalm or refocus myself. And, uh, you know, people are in the hallway like, oh, Nick, how's your game? And I'm like, I just played the shittiest move. And that's all I'm saying to people is this, I just played the worst move I've ever played. Uh, because, yeah, Black just pushes here. And Black, I don't really have time to extend again, right? I just played a dead stone. This is, you know, almost as bad as passing. It's still slightly useful. Um, you know, because uh, later on, maybe, it's better to have a stone here than not have a stone here. Um, but in regard to the outside, it's, it, I passed. Like, I just passed. And in a game that I was already slightly behind, you cannot pass. Especially with an opponent who's not going to give you many opportunities to fight and catch up. Um, so anyway, I initiate this emergency sequence to make life. Uh, black is even very soft. You can see, like, again, black is just very super calm. <laughs> Let's keep everything safe. Let's not be too aggressive. Black should play here, right, and, and make this safe by attacking these four. Um, but he doesn't even do that, right? He's like, oh, I'm going to attack these. I'm just going to very gently, slowly lean on these. Um, and I respond to live, and then he can come back and play this very safely again. So even the, black, the black's, you know, super solid method is working great because... He does nothing to think about, right? All after this move, he has all the initiative on both sides. Ah, uh, let's make lots of angry sounds and drink lots of tea. Eh. Mm. Mm. So white has much suffering. I jump. And he extends. I should play this shape. I thought about this shape, but I was like, you know, it's just a terrible shape. So I just play the super haunte shape. Um, this one could theoretically have a problem later. You know, I don't know. There's free stuff on the outside, but it's not. That's not good sequence. Um, there's just a defect. Is all I'm trying to show, right? There's a potential for a problem. Um, but in this case, I don't really need. I don't. I really. It's, the shape isn't so weak. I need a stone here either, so. All right, I play here, and now you can see, if you're just looking at the board, you are just scrolling to this video at random at this point, this is the part you arrive, you can see white has a weak group here, and white has a weak group here. That, that's it, that's the story of the game. So the computer has black at a 93.5% wind percentage. So black uh, plays this move, which is not on the computer's radar, right? Look, look at all these moves, it's basically um, considering Lots of different ways to disconnect the two weak groups. Um, of course, the winner, though, is the one that doesn't quite disconnect, but more threatens to threatens to disconnect and then invade the top. But he plays this one, so it's a little bit of the wrong direction. Uh, white, um, I play this Tesuji, and again, just like the last game, right, where my opponent played this exact shape Tesuji on me at an inappropriate time, I do the same right back to, to my opponent here. Again, it worked for my opponent last game in the end, sort of, even though it was bad, so why can't it work for me? And so we just play this out. Uh, all these are just, you know, I just basically get a couple sente moves to keep the stick here and, and allow the bottom to potentially be mine just for a couple points. Um, and then I play a move in the center just to try to help both groups. If my opponent was playing really, really sente um, or solid, he could just play here. Right, and not have any problems. That's a very big move. But he does not. Um, he, again, I don't know what he's thinking. Um, maybe he's, he's, he's still thinking that these are kind of a nuisance, these three stones. 
Um, so he takes this opportunity to kill my one stone here. But it's Gote. Even though it solves his problems, I'm I'm very encouraged by it. Right? I'm like, hey, if you're going to play like that, I might have time to do some things. So I double Hane here. And I think I should connect. I play this Tiger's Mouth, but no reason. It just It's almost the same. Um, so I made a few points, and... Uh, you know, maybe after this stone, maybe there's Aji here? I don't know. Um, anyway, I go back to resurrecting, or trying to form a connection in eye space for these two stones. And uh, he extends, again, instead of starting this co. Here, I'm just going to turn off the, the moves, because... It's just, you can just watch the graph if you want to know if anything changes. Um, and there's this co here, that... He takes and starts a co... I don't really want to ever finish this. I have no reason to really finish the Ko until it's worth it. Um, because in order for this Ko to be worth something, Black needs another move to make one of these cuts. Like, if I play a move and Black ignores it and then takes this cut, okay, now I'm fighting the Ko. Now I really want to win this Ko. Um, and if Black backs off, then I just connect and this stone looks dumb. So basically, Black, start, I, you know, my, Black starts this Ko, but he really needs one more move in order for the Ko to be really effective. So... This co, because of that, uh, I respond to everything. This co goes on for literally 50 moves. So the next 50 moves of this game are fought about this co, and white is under no real ambition to end the co until black, I, I, you know, until black pays one other move to make the co really severe. At least that's my reasoning in a game where I'm losing, which I think is pretty good. So I make some threats. I'm going to leave the, the Leela off for a little while, because um, this is just a lot of coing. <laughs> Um, now, I should say, this corner invasion is probably wrong. Um, it's probably too small. It's probably bigger to actually just split this side, especially since black is so strong here. Uh, so I was actually kind of happy at this point. If we put the percentage on, you can even see um, my my chances of winning the game have doubled, <laughs> right, because of the sequence. Uh, so we keep playing Ko. Actually, I'll, I'll leave it on a little bit at this point. Ko, make a threat. Ko, make a threat. Ko... And here's something I kind of miss. Both the threats over here are for both of us. Like, like this is a threat for me and a threat for him. So I should take it. Um, of course, he'll more than likely just fix the code, but then I fix, and then what did Black gain here? Nothing. Right? All of his threats were in vain. So he so he can't fix the code yet. Um, so after this, yeah, he should continue. Like I should, he should be able to treat that as a threat. Actually, this is isn't even a threat. It just kills it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, this is better. I don't know why I'm hallucinating so much. Still, it's still Black's game to lose, but um, that's a that's a good move. All right. Whoops. Dur, 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 dur. So anyway, we play out this this takes co co threat here co threat here. He makes shape. I instead of taking the co, I threaten to connect my stones right now. I just felt like I had time to do this right now. I don't think it's that good, but um, he, he obliges me for one move and then comes back to take the co. And then uh, game says I should just play here and just keep everybody safe, and I think that's a good idea. It just doesn't feel right when I'm behind to play really safe moves like this. Um, actually, to the point where, if you actually go back a couple moves, when does this... Go, yeah, at this point, when Black lives here, the robot is always like, this is too slow. <laughs> um, White should just take the Ko, have no problems, and we're in endgame. Like, where White, if White has no problems, um, this corner was too small, this area can still grow, uh, and Black doesn't have enough compensation. So, the robot even likes White here, like, so I'm winning somehow. But I don't do this. I I'm like, I still have co-threats. I can just keep playing the co. I have no reason to finish the co. I still have threats. So that is that is my logic. Um, but... Yeah, I play this one? Yeah, that's a threat. Yeah, so I get to keep playing co. Alright, now this move, this is where things get serious. This is a move that starts to really threaten um, the connection, like, for the first time. So far, Black hasn't really made that move, right? Black has leaned on this group, but Black just hasn't thrown a stone in between these two groups. Uh, the 
computer really thinks that's a mistake right now. And if white takes the co, even though black gets to kill all these, it's not enough compensation. Because um, black, white will never be able to be attacked for the rest of the game, and white can just play endgame. Um, let's see, let's see what the, yep, yeah, play there, there. Um, black can, you know, or white can get a few extra forcing moves on the outside. Um, but basically all this is rapidly turning into white area. Maybe black can come in a little bit. Oh, black can definitely come in. Oh, but there's a defect right here. Yeah, this gets real dangerous. Interesting, interesting. All right, so black will have to fight to come in this area. Um, but if as long as, long as white doesn't get in trouble, this is either a 50-50 game or even better. Um, even though this is big and this is big, those are really only two black significant pieces of territory, and white can actually come back here and um, link these up. So that would have been very interesting. What a great way to, for me to turn the game around, except I don't. <laughs> So when black plays here, I play here, thinking, hey, this is reasonable. Uh, I'll just keep them like they're connected. <laughs> uh, but when black takes the ko again, I make a ko threat. He responds, take ko. He plays here. I play this move, which is a very passive response to this threat. This is just way too safe. That's okay. Uh, takes ko. I make another ko threat. He takes. Um, he moves out. And this is a small mistake, but still a mistake. I should jump here, because that helps the shape. So I play very heavy-like. That'll come back later to haunt me. <clears throat> Takes the ko. Again, this is a 50-move ko. Um, he... Oh, sorry. I make a threat uh, here to capture these three stones. Again, this is very similar to um, the winning variation. If white gets all these points and is safe here, white wins the game. Um, but he takes his opportunity to connect the ko, so I take an opportunity to make shape. And the game seems to imply that black will still be able to kill this or annoy this enough to kill the whole thing, and so shouldn't have any problem. Um, the game really wants black to start here. This looks like a, I'm not sure, a great exchange, exchange or not, but it's an exchange. Maybe poke it out to a false eye kind of situation. Um, but he plays here and then pushes through here. And I should take this Atari. I was just too, um, too focused on trying to save these or find an opportunity to save these, but I have to be very mindful of my group when I do it. And so I don't want to be mindful. Um, mm, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to just say that these are dead. Because <laughs> I have moves like this, right, that threaten to capture these two stones. All right, so here, for a while, we'll, we'll turn off this for a little bit. Um, with this move, I'm sort of trying to find a way to get these stones out to this stone and hopefully do it while being able to, to cut off these four. And if I can do that, then there's another cut here that will work for me, or at least work in my favor. It doesn't quite work because these Ataris are too severe. There's, there's too many Ataris here for black. Um, so anyway, I just, I just connect it to this stone. Black pushes through and cuts. This cut, cut is severe. Um, uh, for a long time, I debated not answering this move here, which I think is probably better. Let's have a look. Yeah, robot's like, hey, you guys still have big problems down here. You should just play a move like this. <laughs> and just try to live. And even robot's still like, you need another move to live. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just here, let let black destroy this. But you don't die anywhere. Everything's alive. You can go back to pretending you're actually in the game when you're not. Which, you know, I didn't really want to do. I want, I, you know, I have to, in this type of game, I have to make black kill me, right? Like... Um, there's not enough points for me on the board for me to declare myself winner, so I have to keep getting points and hope black doesn't kill me. So I connected here, and this cut is very good, so we played this out. And then you can already see we're sort of back to that 90% win for black. Um, there's still so many problems out here. Uh, I fixed the shape with this move. Now all of a sudden these three stones are dead, these can't escape. Um, so that solves my problems over here temporarily. However, black has really good endgame. And then black played a very curious move. He played here, which is a very poor move, given how tenuous this connection is. Um, the nice thing about it, though, is that uh, when black goes in further or attacks or needs to defend this cut, um, I can't really counterattack, right? He can actually defend this cut now just by Atariing upward. 
So very slow move, not needed. Um, this is this scraggly bit of stones is definitely where the action is. Um, but again, I'm still behind. I need to find more points before trying to defend. So I play over here, and the computer's like, "Yeah, just kill, kill White. Like, just <laughs> finish him." Um, but no, he plays up here, and this sort of gives me a chance to live. And uh, <laughs> instead, I play this move, and this is a terrible misread. I misread this uh, very, very poorly. Um, obviously, or not obviously, maybe, but if Black plays this way, um, there is a little bit... Oh, no, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. If Black, uh, Hane's on this side, White just pulls back. And this is a live shape. This is, uh, just... Well, White can just live in the corner. Isn't that cool? So, that's... This is a misread. Because when Black plays here, there's actually nothing here for White. Like, White... Um, plays here. This is the, this is a, uh, is this the game? I think this is game. Yeah, this is game. Um, th but this is the best white can do. And white is sort of quasi trying to separate the stick, although I haven't cut it yet. Um, but seeing if I can get some free stuff over here first. But I, again, I just keep asking for more free stuff, but it turns out none of it works. I'm going to turn off instead of making you see the 99%. Um, this I, again, I'm, I'm still trying to look, find free stuff, um, but this whole, it doesn't look like, um, you know, anything works, because right, it's true, nothing works. I, I can play that, but that's too big of a sacrifice. Um, if I play here, there's just a throw in here. Um, it doesn't even have to be a throw in, just a target this way too also works. So none of this works, none of this works. And I'm just trying things because I still feel behind. Uh, and I make this shape. He takes just some endgame. And so up to here, uh, right now, this group is alive. I, I'm, I made it alive, even though I ate up a really big corner now. And uh, I can theoretically connect this stone to this stone. But I can't do it without letting these three stones go. And if these three stones go, these five white stones are going to die. And so he finds this move to, to detach them. And I play, and I think I almost did it, but then I don't. <laughs> I'll turn this off to show you guys the sequence. After this move, this move doesn't look like it works for black, right? Because white can just capture, you know, these four stones. Right? Isn't that cool? I just link everything up. Except, if I play this way... Whoops. You know, black will not run it out this far. Um, black will just play here. And I either have to capture or connect. And then black will just come out here. And there's nothing. Right? This is this is nothing. So if all these stones die, even if I cap even if I make this capture and connect, if I save this group and I save this group, uh, this part of the board dies and I still lose the game. <laughs> so this didn't happen. I, I, I mean, the end, the end of the game is I just try something crazy after here, oops, here, and then there, and there. And at this point, I actually just resign, right, like after this move. Um, I guess, I guess, I think he plays it out for two or three moves, but it doesn't work. It, do, it doesn't change the status that Black will either kill these or kill these. And so game two of my US Go Congress was sad. And uh, my camera, am I slouching or is my camera falling over? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I should really tape that camera. Yeah, that's what I should do for my next video. I'll tape it. Yeah. So game two is pretty sad, especially since it's an opponent I've beaten multiple times before. Um, and who I think normally I'm, my style is mostly good against. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is about like this Go Congress and like this left-hand corner and me just sacrificing a group in it to try to split my opponent and, I don't know, it's just this obsession at this point. So, it's pretty painful. It's pretty painful. Now, I assure you, if you do come back for the third video of our Robot Overlord analysis here, uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn things around and, I'll, and we'll, we'll show you how we do it in that video. Okay, so, come on back. Thanks for watching.